the, the various movements occurring at various joints will be shown. The movements occurring at the shoulder girdle, these joints are the sternoclavicular joint medially and the acromioclavicular joint laterally. The movements which occur here are elevation, depression, protraction, retraction, rotation with the lateral angle upwards and rotation with the, down, with the lateral angle downwards. The muscles which are responsible for these movements for elevation as is done in shrugging of the shoulders is done by the trapezius muscle and by the levator scapulae. For depression, the muscle responsible is the pectoralis minor. For protraction, the muscle responsible is the serratus anterior. Now the movements occurring at the various joints in the body will be shown. The shoulder girdle consists of sternoclavicular joint and the acromioclavicular joint. And the movements which occur at these joints are elevation, depression, protraction, when the scapula rotates on the thoracic cage, retraction, when the medial borders of the scapula come together, rota elevation with the lateral angle laterally and depression with the lateral angle downwards. The muscles which are responsible for these movements are for elevation, the, the trapezius muscle, especially the upper fibers of the trapezius and the levator scapulae. For depression, the pectoralis minor. For protraction, the serratus anterior muscle is responsible. For retraction, the middle fibers of trapezius, rhomboidius minor and rhomboidius major. For elevation, till 90 degrees is the deltoid and for rota further rotation, it is the combination of serratus anterior and the trapezius. And for depression, again with the rotation downwards is the gravity and the pectoralis minor. Next joint is the shoulder joint, ball and socket variety of joint, very important joint and it is rather unstable. The movements permitted here are flexion, extension, abduction till 90 degrees, abduction till 180 degrees, adduction, medial rotation. This movement is done to obviate the movement of pronation and supination and this is lateral rotation and of course circumduction used in bowling in cricket. The muscles responsible for these movements for flexion, the pectoralis major, the clavicular head of pectoralis major, anterior fibers of deltoid, for extension, teres major, latissimus dorsi, for adduction, pectoralis major in front, latissimus dorsi behind. For abduction, till 90 degrees, it is almost the deltoid. Above 90, it is again trapezius and serratus anterior. Medial rotation, it is pectoralis major and latissimus dorsi. For lateral rotation, it is infraspinatus and teres minor. Next joint is the elbow joint. Elbow joint, at the elbow joint, only one set of movement occurs, that is flexion and extension. For flexion, the movement responsible are the muscles in the front of arm, that is the, both the heads of the biceps brachii and the brachialis both the heads of biceps and brachialis and for extension it is the triceps brachii muscle. Even the gravity, the passive extension is done because of the effect of gravity. 
in the forearm there are superior radio ulnar joint inferior radio ulnar joint both of synovial variety the middle radio ulnar joint is a syndesmosis movements occurring at these two synovial joints is the movement of pronation or giving and supination the position of receiving pronation when we take something from the plate supination when we put something in the mouth to eat the muscles responsible for pronation are the pronator teres and pronator quadratus muscles responsible for supination is the strong biceps brachii and the biceps brachii and the supinator muscles now coming to the wrist joint this joint is an ellipsoid joint movements permitted are flexion extension abduction adduction and of course circumduction the muscles for flexion are flexor carpi radialis flexor carpi ulnaris flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus for extension muscles passing ten muscles and tendons passing at the back extensor digitorum extensor carpi radialis longus brevis extensor carpi ulnaris for abduction it is flexor carpi radialis extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis for adduction it is flexor carpi ulnaris and extensor carpi ulnaris now very important joint is the first carpo metacarpal joint is the first carpo metacarpal joint for this the hand is placed flat on the table the thumb is raised and this is the movement of abduction done by abductor polysis brevis this is the movement of adduction done by adductor polysis when we take across this is flexion accompanied by medial rotation and this one is opposition when we are counting touching the tip of the little finger touching the tip of the other fingers the muscle responsible for the flexion are flexor pollicis brevis and opponens pollicis now here this is the movement of extension here the tendon of extensor pollicis longus becomes prominent and is accompanied by lateral rotation and of course this movement is the circumduction the other joints are metacarpophalangeal joint metacarpophalangeal joint of the second third fourth and fifth digits and the movements occurring at these are flexion by flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus extension by extensor digitorum abduction by the dorsal interossei and adduction by the palmar interossei muscles next is the proximal interphalangeal joints these joints are hinge type of joint and they only allow flexion and extension flexion is done by tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus and extension done by the ex, by the extensor digitorum and the muscles which are going with the extensor digitorum coming to the distal interphalangeal joint this is also a hinge type of joint the muscle responsible for flexion is only flexor digitorum profundus and here this is the slip of extensor digitorum which with the lumbricals and the interosseous these are the movements possible at the various joints in the upper limb